Good day to each and everyone who are watching right now, especially my Ecom learners. Welcome to another learning journey with me. Today, we will talk about an essential lesson centered on the initial pages of a research paper. But before I start my discussion, if it's your first time here in my educational channel, I would certainly be glad to have you with me. So what are you waiting for? Click the subscribe button, like and share this video to anyone you know would benefit from it. And now let's get the ball rolling. One among the initial pages of a research paper, which at the same time is very essential, would be the approval sheet. Approval sheet page is sometimes referred to as the signature page. Well, obviously, as you can see in the example, you will need to have a signed approval sheet as part of your defense process. This sheet proves that the researchers have passed the requirements needed for the paper. This is signed by the research advisor, panel or members and the school head as you can see in that example. I intentionally have hidden the names of the people involved or the signatories for data privacy purposes. The next page of the paper is what we call the acknowledgement. In the majority of research papers, acknowledgement relates to the part of research project where author shows gratitude to the people who contributed to the research project. An acknowledgement in research paper is actually a section that lists everyone who supported the project. In academic writing, it is usual practice to acknowledge the contributions of donors, departments, and individuals who have been of help during the research. The contribution may be financial, but also in the form of feedback on the manuscript during its drafting and revision. Acknowledgements give you the opportunity to thank all those who have helped in carrying out the research. Careful thought needs to be given concerning those whose help should be acknowledged and in what order. It is expected that appreciation is given in a concise manner without strong emotive language. In some cultures like ours, as you see in this part of the paper example, the researchers also show their gratitude to the God, to our Lord. However, in Western and secular societies, this is not an academic practice. Following after the acknowledgement is an abstract. An abstract is a brief paragraph at the beginning of an academic paper, like a research paper, that provides an overview of the article. The purpose of the abstract is to provide an overview of the paper just like what I said. As such, it acts like a mini version of the paper and follows the same structure as the main text. The contents of an abstract would be an introduction to the topic and purpose of the study. It goes on to briefly describe as well the methods used in the study and it ends with the conclusion or conclusions drawn from the study and why the findings are important. Another key role of the abstract is to persuade readers to read or access the whole paper. This is true even in cases where a journal subscription is not needed to access the full paper. As most researchers do not have time to read every published article that is relevant to their field of interest. Therefore, reading an abstract gives readers the opportunity to decide how interesting, relevant, and important the research paper is and whether it is worth investing the time to read the whole article. Nonetheless, it is crucial that your abstract accurately reflects the content of the paper itself. Next in line is the research table of contents. In research, a table of contents is a structured list of the main sections or chapters and often figures clearly labeled by page number just like this example you are seeing right now. It provides readers with an overview of the organization and structure of the document, allowing them to quickly locate specific information and navigate through the document. Here are some reasons why a table of contents is important. First, 
navigation. It serves as a roadmap that helps readers navigate the document easily. By providing a clear and concise overview of the contents, readers can quickly locate the section they need to read without having to search through the entire document. Second is organization. A well-structured table of contents reflects the organization of the document. It helps to organize the content logically and categorize it into easily digestible chunks, which makes it easier for readers to understand and follow. The third one is clarity. It can help to clarify the document's purpose, scope, and structure. It provides an overview of the document's main topics and subtopics, which can help readers to understand the content's overall message. The fourth one is efficiency. This can save readers time and effort by allowing them to skip to the section they do not need to read, rather than having to go through the entire document. And the last and finally is professionalism. Including a table of contents in a document shows that the author has taken the time and effort to organize the content properly. It adds a level of professionalism and credibility to the document. Remember that a good table of contents should be easy to read, accurately formatted and completed last so that it is 100% accurate. These are only the initial pages of a research paper that students like you must be familiar with to ensure completeness of your manuscript. I hope I have imparted valuable learning to everyone who are watching this video lesson. Again, these are the initial pages of a research paper. That's it for today and I'll be with you again in the next video lesson. Thank you for watching and always remember that happiness is a choice so always choose to wear a happy heart.